This is a test of the Boundary Park Alert System. Coming up on this week's episode of the Boundary Park Alert System, we have all the usual stuff. The review of the game against Dagenham and Redbridge. We hear from Mickey Mellon. We have Latik's Mind. Yeah, well, all the usual stuff. But we've also got an interview of the first part of a two-part interview that I've done with the OASF chair, Morris Scott. So we will play that a little bit later on. But first... <laughs> Hi, it's Sexy Dave from the Oldham, Oldham Athletic Podcast, the Boundary Park Alert System with a new listener for this week. What's your name, mate? Andy Potts. Andy Potts. Right, can I call you Potsy? Of course you can. Right, Potsy. What's the score going to be today? We were just talking about that, weren't we? And we said 3-1. Yeah, and who, what are you called, mate? Yeah, I think it's going to be 3-1. What's your name? Harry. Mini Potts, yeah? Potts Junior. Right, who's going to score? Jack, what do you reckon? Fonda, yeah, I think for Mikey, big Fonda, Mike. Fonda Patrick. Yeah. So what do you think of the results of late? You know, we beat Halifax 3-1, then we go away. Uh, who who do we, we, we go win away against? I can't remember now, before Maidenhead. Who was it? I can't remember. Uh, who did we play away before Maidenhead? Who was it? I can't remember. No, it was a base. No, that was last game. No, oh, it's Sutton. Sutton. Right, so we, we, beat, yes. we beat Sutton. Yeah. <laughs> and then we 2 0 down and come back against Maidstone 2 all. But yeah. do you reckon that's an exceptional? We could have won it, couldn't we? I think Tuesday night games are always difficult. Travelling all the way down there, really difficult, really good, difficult journey. I think playing obviously Saturday, then, then the Tuesday, I think that's a decent result to be fair to, for them. But they could have won it. And that's what's exciting about Oldham at the moment. They've got goals in them. Yeah, and do you think the, the style of the players got a lot better since the start of the season? Tons, tons better. Who did they get beat off the other week? Was it uh, Solly Hull at home? But I, I think another 10 minutes were scoring. Yeah. Well, we've had 15 games, we've lost two, and we've got Tranmere in the FA Cup. Do you think we'll get a win there? Hopefully, yeah. Why not? It's a, it's a, it's a free ticket, isn't it? Yeah. The ever, the ever optimistic Oldham fan there, mate. Well, thanks for joining me. Really appreciate it. No, n- nice to meet you, mate. I'll, I'll, I'll sign in. I'll tune in. Yeah. Good stuff. It's sexy day for the Boundary Park Alert System, and I'm here with Duncan. Tell me where you come from today, Duncan. I'm from Oldham. Yeah, I know, but where's your family come from? Kent. Kent. So a long trip. Seven Oaks in Kent. Seven Oaks. What's you brought? What's brought? A load of Seven Oaks residents all the way to watch Oldham Athletic. Because the father is an Oldham supporter who lived in Kent for 30 years but has moved back up here. Right then. So, it's been a torrid few years of Oldham, had it? So, how could you be so cruel to make your grandkids support Oldham Athletic? Do you like Oldham? Yes. Who's your favourite player? Uh. Tonight. Can't remember. <laughs> James Norwood, Mikey Fondop. 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 Yeah, Fondop. God's number nine. So, what score do you think it'll be today, mate? I don't. What score today? What? What score? score? I'm from the north. <laughs> what score do you think it's going to be today, mate? 2-1. There you go. 2 what? Who's going to score? Uh, Fondop. <laughs> anyway, it's, it's all right. Right, what's your name, pal? Sammy. Sammy. Who's your favourite player? James Dungman. James Norwood, right. And what do you think of the current results? We beat Sutton and we drew with Maidenhead. Were you happy with them results? Yeah. What? And do you think we'll go up this season? Hopefully. Ah, there's the Oldham fan in there. (laughs) And what's your name, mate? Callum. And you're a massive Oldham fan as well, are you? Arsenal fan, yeah. Arsenal, all right, great. (laughs) It's getting better, this interview. What score do you think it'll be today, mate? I fancy 3-1 Oldham. I'm not sure if Norwood's starting, but if he starts, he'll bag one. And then maybe a couple from Fondop. He's in He's in a good scoring form. And you, you're impressed with Mellon then, are you, as the manager? I think this season you can't not be. Even when they've lost or drawn, the performance has been good. So you can't argue that. So it's like we're turning a corner. It's our time. 30, 34 years since we've had any success other than the Isle of Man Cup win. 
in the 2016. Yeah, go on. His first game was a, a playoff game against Blackpool. So he's a bit of a Jonah then. 100%. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So Callum slash Jonah from uh, Seven Oaks. So that's quite worrying. I hope you're right, Callum. And thanks, Duncan, for your time. It's been greatly appreciated. And thanks, Sammy. Thank you. Hello and welcome to the Boundary Park Alert System in a sun-drenched Oldham this morning, Andy. I don't know what it's like down in London, but it's gorgeous up here. No, it's the same down here. <clears throat> yeah, it's lovely weather, so we're going to yeah. go out for a walk in a minute. Yeah, absolutely, fair enough. Yesterday at Boundary Park was similar, absolutely beautiful day. Um, yeah. what, did you manage to catch much of the game yesterday, Andy? No, I'm uh, absolutely useless for this podcast. Um, I, went to, <laughs> I went to a five-year-old's birthday party yesterday, which... Uh, oh, yeah. I bet you had the fun. time of your life, didn't you? Yeah, I loved every minute of the screaming <laughs> and the wailing. Yeah, every uh, every, every painstaking, long, drawn-out minute of it. Yeah, <clears throat> but I was checking the score uh, and it was, it was nervy, wasn't it? <laughs> And it, yeah, well, the score didn't change for a long time, did it? Thankfully, no. so. Uh, well, I was I was at Maidenhead on Tuesday, of course, so we can uh, weave that into the chat. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Should we? Should we? Um, should we introduce the fan guest in the in the usual fashion first? Yeah, let's do it. Uh, it's a it's a fan guest debutante, so we'll go through the full repertoire of questions. Uh, when was your first game, fan guest? First game I can remember, I was about four years old. I don't remember the match. I remember sitting there freezing in the main stand with some green Wellington boots on with frog eyes on the front. But that was 1985. 85 was another one of our generation, Matt. It was the, it's, the, it's the epicentre, isn't it? That, that sort Absolutely. of range. Yeah, yeah, yeah 85. Yeah. So you, you lived through all of the Halcyon days, which is great. Um, what, who was your first favourite player then? My first favourite player was Rick Holden. Loved him. Absolute yeah. class. Yeah, he was. Yeah. No, no arguments there. Um, what is your favourite Latics related memory? Oh, that's a, a bit of a tough one. Well, it's, it's not a tough one, is it? It's, it's gaining, it's winning the Division 2 championship, being the champions of Division 2. That, that day will live on forever in my memory. Where were you in the ground that day against Sheffield Wednesday? Uh, I was in the main stand. My dad's always a, used to have a season ticket in the main stand. He got the opportunity to move across to the north stand, which he's done. So at the time, we were sat on the, on the front row, main stand upper. Nice. Yeah, good view from up there. Good view. Um, and then tell us a little unknown fact about yourself. Unknown fact about myself. Um Played a curtain razor at Wembley for Oldham Town Team Rugby. Did you? Yes. What What was that before? What 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 was What What played after you? If that was the curtain razor. Uh, it was Castleford, and I can't remember the other team. I only remember Castleford because we sat at the um, Castleford team's table in the hotel. We stayed in with uh, Mike Ford from the Oh yeah, and that was that was, that was it. It was and that was the old Wembley, was it? Yeah, mint. So oh, that would have cool. been uh, that, that would have been the Challenge Cup final, would it? Before the Challenge Cup final. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Well, decent, aren't it? So, I'm uh, um, fan guest this morning. Who are you? Who are you? What's your name? Uh, John Clark. Welcome to the podcast, John. Thank you. So, were you at Boundary Park yesterday, John? I was indeed. Yes. Um, it was a funny game. Really, didn't really get going in. Sort of the performance on the pitch or the atmosphere but you know they did enough to take the three points and that's all we wanted at the minute I suppose it was a weird it was a weird one wasn't it it was a very sort of flat occasion in in in, in every sort of sense yesterday I don't know why it was um like that but it was there wasn't much it was like I said it was a beautiful sunny day there was a decent crowd in there it's half term I think you know maybe you know people a few people are away and stuff but it was a yeah decent crowd, but fairly quiet. Not 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 much to get excited about during the actual game, which which doesn't help, does it? It wasn't a 
It wasn't a, a, an epic encounter. It wasn't lots and lots of chances missed by either team. It was a pretty sort of turgid kind of game, really. And it was, as a spectacle, it's pretty boring. Um, what is that? Is that what you made of it, John? Would you say? Would you describe it as a pretty boring game, or is it just? Was that just me? No, it it, it felt like um, it had it had the atmosphere and the feel of a of a pre season friendly at the start of summer, where everyone's just sat in the sun, nobody's really interested, players included. It, it was just a strange game. Yeah, yeah, it definitely was. Yeah, but um, have have you seen the goal, Andy, in the highlights? I've seen the goal, yeah. Obviously, I've looked at the goal. And, you know, who cares? I, I, I'm, exactly. I'm no, very, nobody... very, no. <laughs> very, exactly. very happy exactly. to have some boring, turgid affairs if you come out with three points at the end. And that is, um, this is what this is what um, the Tranmere fans promised us we would get with Mellon, isn't it? Uh, this type of stuff is, it won't be pretty at times, but it'll grind you out results. And I mean, long may it continue. You know, I think as, as each week progresses and passes and uh, and we keep picking up points. Um, I, I get more and more sort of comfortable with Mickey Mellon's style and knowing how it's going to pan out and um, and, and I'm I'm really, really comfortable with it. You know, uh, we, we've played we've, we've played well in patches this season without really, you know, tearing anyone a new one yet. Um, and, and hopefully that will come at some stage. But yeah, grinding out points is 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 good. It, it's a bit like in the week. Obviously, I can't talk about yesterday. A bit like in the week, we weren't we weren't very good at, at Maidenhead, um, but we did enough to get a point out of a game that we were two 0 down in, and it showed a bit of resilience and fight. And I think that's what Mickey Mellon is clearly instilling in this group of players is is a will to try and you know get something out of the game no matter what. Uh, however, however that particular game pans out, I think that's a good sign. I'm I'm. Genuinely, really quite happy at the minute. I don't know about you two, but I think this this is panning out all right at the minute. Well, I failed to see how, how we can be unhappy. Um, fifth, sitting fifth in the table, five points off York City, who absolutely pulled it out of the bag yesterday at Halifax. Uh, got to give them a uh, got to give them a bit of credit for their following as well. They had over two thousand fans at Halifax. Uh, that was probably one of their nearest nearest games uh, for York. But I mean. Yeah, scenes in the in the away end at uh, Halifax uh, yesterday when they scored two goals in injury time to uh, to take top top spot. Uh, had they you know had they lost, it would have been four points away from Forest Green, you know. And 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 all right, you, you keep saying at this this stage in the season that it's not too much of an issue with the league table and that. But like we said, if we'd have lost the game to the, uh, yesterday, um, then a little bit of a gap opens up, and we didn't. We won the game. Got to give credit to Mike Fondot for outsmarting the keeper uh, and um, deciding to jump for the ball. Um, that, that their keeper didn't that never dawned on him, did it, to actually jump for the ball? And Mikey did uh, a great leap, and um, yeah, that was it. While Neil took a chance, and apart from that, John, there wasn't that many clear cut chances, was there, for either side? No, there wasn't. Um, don't get me wrong, either. It- it was just a very flat game. There was nothing wrong with it. It wasn't awful, but they didn't make many mistakes or look like we were in any sort of trouble at any point. Um, like I say, it's, it's probably just Mickey's way, grind that result out, get it out of the way, and on your move with your three points. Uh, there's absolutely nothing wrong with it in getting the result. I think, I think what we, in fairness, just to counter that, I think the last five minutes. It's, we definitely, definitely um, didn't manage the game very well. Josh K managed to get himself sent off, which was stupid, just before the final whistle. We gave away about four, at least three or four, really good positions for free kicks for Dagenham to launch the ball in the box. It got a bit panicky. And, it, 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 it yeah, I think it's one of them... It could have easy, we could have easily thrown it away at that uh, that point because we managed the game poorly. We didn't we didn't uh, do all the little tricks and and little things and cynical things that you need to do just to see out the game. But we did, and we move on. So, but it was a bit nervy at the end for sure. It wouldn't be lattice if it wasn't. It's been like that my entire life. I don't know. They've very, very. You know, far and few between have you been really comfortable in the last five minutes of a game. So it's typical. But, I mean, look, we've done it again. The things that, are, that, that sort of, if you look ahead now, we've got York at home on Boxing Day, right? That's going to yeah. be an absolute rip snorter, that, isn't it, um, when they turn up? And 
York away is on Easter Monday, which is yeah. the uh, you know third last game of the season. They could yeah. be absolute belters, those two, couldn't they? Oh, proper title deciders, they're Monday. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. But that's um, the thing, we've got, a, we've got a... Sorry, go on, mate. I don't know if you know this. Um, I, I was having a look at the, the table, form table, all that sort of stuff. Uh, you, you can take form over whatever period you want. Um, but there's there's four teams in the league that have amassed two points plus a game, and we're, we're just outside that um, because of the, the more indifferent start that we had. But if you look at the last eight, we've taken 2.38 points per game over the last eight, and that is the most in the league. In front of York, in front of Barnet, uh, in front of Forest Green, in front of Gateshead, um, with all the last eight games, uh, we've been the best in the league. Um, we're the only team in the league that have scored in every game. So we might not be putting four or five in every week, but our fail to score percentage is zero. Every other team has failed to score in a game. Um, it, it, for, for all the talk about our defence being much better this season, we have actually leaked 17 goals, which is mm. you know quite a lot. York have only let nine in. Um, but take a couple of those games out of it where we've conceded like seven in a couple. Um, you know, I think there's lots and lots of good signs, aren't there? Every time I look at it and I look, just look for something, I think, well, that's sort of supporting us going on or continuing this. I don't feel like we're going to fall away like we did last year. I feel like we're going to be in it all the way and it could go right to the wire. Exciting, isn't it? <laughs> it is. How are you feeling, John, at this stage in the season? Um so what is it now? It's I don't want to make you feel you know really old or anything, but it's the best part of forty years since you first went to a latest match, uh, and we've had some like you know we've, we've had some great moments, but we've also had some stinkers along the way. The majority of seasons have been stinkers. How are you feeling about this one at this stage at late at late October, John? Uh, very optimistic. Very optimistic. Um, optimism that I've really had over the past sort of twenty five years. Um, I agree with Andy. I think it does. It does feel like we're going to sustain it. It does feel like we're we're only going going to go in one direction. I feel like we're just going to get better. Mm. Yeah, there's 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 lots to be positive about, and and you know this next month, and this is what's great about it is is you're looking forward uh, to to the fixtures, as in you know viewing them and, 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 and taking them in and seeing what's ahead of you, but also looking forward to them in the sense that you're excited about them. I mean, this next month, we've got Tranmere next week in the Cup. Then we've got uh, Barnet, so a top-of-the-table clash at Barnet, chance to to make some ground up on them. Then we've got Tamworth at home. You've got to fancy us against that. Then we've got Rochdale away, another top-six clash. And then we've got Boston United. So there's a real chance if you... If, if, you know, we, we take some liberties and, and allow ourselves a bit of confidence to say that, right, we're going to beat these two newly promoted teams at home and then got some real, you know, two big games then to try and close the gap on Barnet and distance ourselves from Rochdale. So October is going to be, sorry, November is going to be a hell of a month. It's going to be really exciting and it's going to be really um, enjoyable if, if we get the results that we want as well. It, it is. Um, and, and I guess we've, we've got to move the conversation on to... Um, what the strike force is going to look like over that month. <laughs> because <laughs> because you're starting... itching to talk about James Norwood. Go on. <laughs> well, I mean, it, uh, James Norwood obviously forms part of that conversation, but I guess it's a bit wider than that. We started off the season with six strikers, right? You know, and uh, we've only got, two, we only had two in the, in the whole squad yesterday. We couldn't even feel one on the bench. Uh, obviously we've shipped some out. Um, not all them read are out on loan. Willoughby's out on loan. Mm. Uh, Garner's been perpetually injured this season. Um, and we called it a few weeks ago. And clearly from... Are you going to play Mickey Mellon's interview today, Matt? Um, I've got it that, lined up whenever you, want to, whenever you want to hear it, Andy. Well, I've not listened to it yet, so it'll be, it'll be good to listen to it. Um, but we called it a couple of weeks ago and Suzanne Geldard referenced it in her article last night. Uh, there is clearly an issue with James Norwood. Um, he, he was... Uh, photographed over at Nando's on, on Elk Mill having a having a bit of tucker just before the game. And um I believe he was back in the main stand for the match, but there's clearly an issue. And um it'd be interesting to see over the coming weeks how that pans out. Because it's gonna go one or two ways, isn't it? Uh Mickey's mm-hmm. either gonna get him focused or he's gonna be out the door in January. One of the two. 
there's definitely only going to be one winner in 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 terms of um, <laughs> you know whether Norwood plays or not. That decision will be made by Mickey Mellon. Absolutely, um, I I feel like with with the situation, you know, the three players that you've mentioned out on loan, um, and what's going on now with Norwood, we have to mention. I don't I don't want to keep banging this drum again, but Josh Stones was there again yesterday, wasn't he? He was, in, yeah, in, in, the stand, in, yeah. The, in the stand. I, I do feel like the situation that we're in now. Something is going to happen with strikers. Somebody's got to be. Somebody has got to be um, on the on the radar of the club for bringing in. I'd say because this situation is unsustainable. If we're going, if we're going to uh, have a promotion challenge this season, we need more goals. We need more options. Um, Drummond again. I thought he did quite well yesterday. Did all, a lot of moving, occupying defenders and stuff. But there was a, a significant lack of attempts on goal yesterday. Very frustrating. Not Jez came in and then actually cut in from the uh, the left and took a shot with his right foot, which he doesn't do enough. Drummond didn't get some shots away, trying to feed Fondop in when he was, you know, maybe preoccupied with the defenders. And again, not enough shots from midfield. There was a, there was a moment in the first half when Tom Conlon got an opportunity that the, the defence had split in front of him. He was able to take a touch. He played a good ball out to Caprice, but he didn't need to. There was a ch- there was a chance on there to get his left foot through it and smash it at goal. And we've got to take more shots. Uh, we've got to have more confidence in front of goal. And I think we need somebody in the squad alongside Fondop, who's who's actually you know fancying his chances and, and feeling full of confidence and, and wants to score goals and. and Maybe, you know, I, the Alex Reed thing is 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 you know he's out there on loan and he's he's scoring goals for Wheelstone. I'm I'm assuming that that's you know he's there till January. And that's I can't see us recalling it, but it doesn't seem like that that's the kit that that's the the play. You know, go out, let him get some confidence and some goals, and then call him back. It doesn't feel like that's the issue, does it? So that does leave us with a real shortfall of strikers uh, that we are going to have to remedy coming up to Christmas time. Yeah, uh, Mick, I think you can see <clears throat> now. Mickey wants players that put a put a shift in, don't he? He wants players that get stuck in and put their all in. He doesn't really want. He, he's not really a big fan of a show pony. He wants to, um, you know, uh, drift in and out of the game and then just come alive in the six yard box and and maybe he, he wants players that will put graft in. And that's the issue with Norwood. Is I think Norwood's body language and effort and attitude is not to the standard that Mickey is prepared to accept. And all of the stuff that's gone before, you know, in terms of Mickey's history with him and and what he's achieved higher up the, the leagues is irrelevant. Mickey's yeah. it's not, it's not relevant. And and James Norwood is is the he gives off the impression that he thinks it is relevant. And I like I like James Norwood. I think he's a good player. I've got I quite like the arrogance. I like a striker to be arrogant. This this part it comes with the, the territory. I've got no problem with the arrogance. I don't care what picture he's got on his social media accounts. I don't care whether he celebrates or not. I'm not bothered. But I do want him to put the effort in. And um and if he's not, then that's fair enough. Alex Reed for me is he's too much of a show pony that Mellon don't like him. He's he's not he's not a Mellon sort of player. He's not gonna put the graft in. He's he's just gonna, you know, put the W's in the chat and Make sure his uh, socks are rolled up to exactly the right place he wants them. And then he might come alive and nick you a goal here and there. But he'll do bugger all else in the game. And that's not enough for Mickey, is it? You got Like we said before with Mickey, if you look what he's done with, with Lundstrom this season, if you look what he's done with, with Mike Fondock this season, so he's, he's improved those players and they're, they're performing better than they've done before. And that's credit to Mickey Mellon. So I, I'm prepared to back Mickey. If Mickey says James Norwood doesn't deserve to start, fair enough. I'd like Mickey to get him firing up. That's what I want him to do. Yeah. Or what I want him I to think, do. I think you're right. I think one one of the things that he said was is to build a team that represents the town of Oldham and the people of Oldham. And he, and he's I think what he's alluding to there is the kind of working class roots of the town and and, and his own roots. And and yeah, first and foremost, you've got a, you've got a graft like you, you've got to work hard like 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 the fans that watch the games. And also, I think that applies off the pitch as well. Very much. Very much so. Like the whole thing has got to be right. It's not just about you know if you think you know in the percentage of of a footballer's time uh, of, of their job that they spend playing football is minuscule in terms of the hours that they have to put in. You know, it's it's tiny. So it's the rest of the time that you've that you've got to be absolutely a hundred percent at your game as a professional. That's gonna it's gonna reward you're gonna get them rewarded with with minutes on the pitch, and then 
you know, the amount of time you get on the ball then on the pitch is minuscule. So the amount of work you have to do off the ball far exceeds the amount of work you have to do with the ball. So this whole thing is is very much part of the the mentality, the mindset, the the professional approach that he wants for the football club. And 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 again, that cannot be cannot be faulted. That is absolutely what we need. We need that running through from absolutely everybody at the club. So and and Mellon's right at the heart of that. And if players don't fit into that, then they have to go and they have to they have to sit on the sidelines. They have to go to Nando's, whatever it is that they need to do. They need to do because that's it, they, they don't fit into the they don't fit into the the system that and, and the framework that Mellon's putting in place. So absolutely, hundred percent behind him on it. Uh, he makes the decisions. Should we listen to him? All this talk about him, I think we should listen to him now. Mickey, a single goal won it this afternoon. How pleasing was that win? Yeah, it, it, for me. It, and, and I'm not making uh, excuses. When I, when I came here today, I thought we've got, we've played three games in seven days, and I know people are going to say, "Oh, yeah, we did," and we've had two monster journeys, and um, haven't had a lot of time today, much in between. And I just thought coming here today, just one, just 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 one, just uh, finish a, a, a week off. Um, there's been tough travelling wise and, and and tough games. It took us seven and a half hours to get us something last Friday, so I don't see much of the family. I've been away for five days out of the last sort of six or seven, so it's been um, it's been a lot of travelling for the players. Um, so I kind of, in my head, had an idea that I never mentioned anything to the players. I never mentioned the word tired or anything like that to them. But in my head, I just thought, just win, just winning, and let's get out of here. I wasn't. Um, so I try my best to be part of the entertainment society today. I just thought, just get the result, get over the line, we'll just move on and, and pick up a valuable three points. I was going to ask you, yeah, some wins simply just about grinding out the result. Yeah, I think, I, 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 seriously, I, if, if somebody had pulled me in the quiet, I said, look, I know that we're going to have some tired bodies at some point today. I'm going to have to use my bench as, as much as I possibly can um, at important times um, and just try and get the result. Just try and get the result over the course of a season in, in, in these these divisions, not just our division, the ones above as well. Sometimes you cop for a week like this, and you just think, Do you know what? Just show a lot of character, just do the things that's necessary, get out of the line, and let's get out of here. On that note, then, how much credit do the players deserve for putting in three Incredible. performances this Incredible. week? Incredible. Um, the uh, the the, the fought and, and scrapped and and uh, got us a. It's been a really good week. To get seven points out of nine, two away games. Um, you would have to say that you'd be you'd be satisfied with that. So uh, every credit to them. They they're they're dying and their feet in there. Uh, they're tired, but um, they get a couple of days. We'll get a couple of days rest now, which is well deserved, and um, we'll we'll get them uh, prepared for the next game. Mike Fondop scored the only goal. We've spoken about him a couple of times this season. I think it's fourteen goal contributions now for this season. How would you sum up the way he's risen to the Incredible. challenge? Incredible, brilliant. Um, he's a he's a big player for us. We uh, we're delighted that he's here, and uh, he's he's popped up today with another really invaluable goal. Uh, we, he gets his fair share of criticism because of the chances he misses. But he can when he, when he goes in schools one a day, maybe we give him another life, and we say no, that's all right, Mike. He can he can uh, carry on. But uh, no, he's that was an important goal for us and a good time. Is he vital now to the way the team operates? I think they all are. I think uh, you can see that they all have a part to play in the way that they want to play. Um, and that's uh, that's credit to him. But that's what, we're, we're not going to have results now. We, even when we don't believe that we played anywhere near what we were, um, you have to have a credit to say, well, we're, we're still getting results. I don't think, in all honesty, and, and I have a lot of respect for, for tagging him, I don't think keep, my keepers had a, mistake, a, a save to make in the whole game. Um, but it's always just a wee bit nervous, and it were you've only got one one goal lead, and, and, and you know what football's like at any moment. You, it's a shot at goal can change everything. So you're you're kind of just thinking, Look, guys, just go over the line, and then five minutes comes up at the end. You just think, oh, you know, uh, keep going, boys, and, and they did. They, they, they got a facts out. We got we got a viable three points. The red cards in the game. Do you have a view on them? I don't think their one was a red card, um, and I don't think. If you play football and the ball comes to you that fast, I've played, believe it or not, uh, and when the ball comes to you that fast, it's a, a, a reaction. There wasn't a long delay. 
in fact, when the ball was open, he's already had, he's already made the movement to play the ball. You've got to have a wee bit of common sense and a wee bit of football know-how there in that moment to understand when you've committed to go and play in the ball, there ain't much going to stop you now. There ain't much. Uh, the, the decision's been made. The act's been decided upon, and he's already um, he's he's he's, uh, he's he's been caught for that. Um, no, I thought, I thought both sides are crap. Um, really crap uh, and um, the boy from Dagenham as well could find himself unlucky as well but uh, again don't want to talk about that I just want to talk about my players I, I stand a refereeing is what it is um, everybody complains about it all the time but we'll be complaining about it again soon um, but I'm very pleased about the effort and the character of my players and how the supporters rallied them energised them, knew that it was it did, we needed them and um, when we needed them they rose and, and they got us gone and, and their support was all very grateful for their support uh, towards the, the end to get us over the line. Just to finish off, seven wins from the last nine I think now it is. And you said, how could I improve that? <laughs> I said it's been Friday. Um, how can we right the wrongs of how we're doing at the last? What have I said? I want, what am I all about seven out of nine wins? I mean, if, give me that again. Okay, let the day's crap is what you thought was doing out for the next sort of seven or eight games. Let me improve on that, um, and I'll be delighted uh, with that. No, massive effort. Turning the draws into wins now is, is always going to be important. A great clean sheet, great character shown by the players, um, and uh, a, a really valuable win. And, and yeah, like you say, I'll um, just keep racking up the wins and. and over the course of a long season, there'll be other games like that, and you just want to make sure you just get one and get out of here, get out of town, just get it done. Well, that's thank you all. Now, I'm a big fan of Mickey Mellon. Now, I, I, I really like the way he speaks. I like his honesty. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm, 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 I'm definitely a fan. John, what do you, what do you make of him? You know, when, you, when you listen to him, what, uh, what do you make of that in, uh, assessment of today, and, and just in general, what's your thoughts on Mickey Mellon? Uh, yeah, I, I do like Mickey Mellon. Um, I, I I went through a phase where I, I started having doubts, but I think that would just sort of, oh no, he would go again. It's another run's worth for a, for a month or two. But deep down, I mean, I posted on Twitter, I think Mickey Mellon's going to be our next year Royal. And that's a massive statement, but I, I truly believe that. Um, I think he's, it kind of explains where he's at with Norwood, that interview. He, he's talking, he talks about players that are going to win that particular game for him. So, is Mickey Mellon thinking, is James Norwood going to turn up, fired up, hungry in his belly to go and beat Dagenham and Redbridge? And I think the answer to that is probably no, he's not. You know, he's, he's, he's not got that passion, he's not got that desire to do what every other player in the squad is expected to do. Um, but yeah, I, th- I, think he's doing, I think he's doing well, he's keeping it nice and tight, he's obviously got a group of players there that will fight for each other, that you can see they want to win every game. You see they're looking after each other. Um, and I think he's just trying to keep that going. Yeah, I think I think we, I think think in terms of, you know, just to, I don't want to be, this to be the Norwood show, but, you know, in terms of what he said about travelling and, and minutes that they spent on the pitch and the amount of time and energy that they put in and, and, and Norwood's not played that much football, so you'd expect him to be a bit fresher. And he, and he didn't, you know, he didn't even get a place on the bench. That is quite telling. You know when you he, when he's saying that he's, you know, his expectation today was to just let's just win the game. I, I love that little uh, comment. We're not, you know, not the entertainment society. Um, just win the game, <laughs> and he didn't think that Norwood, despite you know his relative freshness, was was going to deliver. Um, so yeah, I mean, I mean, whether he said that to him, <laughs> that's what's pissed off Norwood and sent him to Nando's. Uh, so that can be like the new Coventry. Like, you know, like you send someone to Coventry, they all say it when you ignore them. <laughs> the it can be send them to Nando's. Um, but yeah, Andy, what do you, I mean, are you, are you like me with Melon? Do, do you sort of, is it, I, there's, I think there's an authenticity with what he's saying. Like we've only, I've only met him once with the, when, when um, I met him with you, uh, I stood in on, in on an interview last season when he was particularly annoyed. 
uh, about the. I can't remember what game it was, or whatever. But yeah, um, so I've not. I'm certainly not his best friend. You know, like people. I think you know, when people were going on about me being Unsworth, I met Unsworth twice and I uh, know three times. But uh, you know, so like I was never texting him or anything like that. I don't have that kind of relationship with with anyone in the football side of of Latics. I, I have pretty much the same kind of. Uh, experience of, of managers as as everybody else does, uh, with the odd exception of, of the odd interview and stuff like that. And just through listening to him, and 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 I feel like we're watching the <clears throat> excuse me, I feel like we're watching the same games of football, which <laughs> which always helps, doesn't it? I think when you when when you've got a manager, uh, that, <clears throat> and that that goes a long way to, to building that foundation and that relationship. Well, that's that was one of the one of the reasons why we love Shed so much is it was it was an authentic view that that you could recognise, and he just said it as it was in a very very Mancunian Northern style. And it, you know he's, he's a Glaswegian, any Mickey, and he's pretty much of a similar cut from a similar cloth. So yeah, yeah. I, I mean I, I'm warm. I've warmed to him much more. I find him quite dour as an individual. You know, like, if you think about the managers that 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 have take that I've taken to in the past, they're full of character and uh, sort of effervescent in their use of the language you know like joe royal had a real twinkle in his eye when he did interviews and would always say something provocative or cute in the interview um ian dowie was an articulate man um uh you know lee johnson had a way of framing things i, I talked to all those managers because of the way that they communicated um mickey's communication style is much more dour but it is authentic and it is honest and you know, I'm, I've I've warmed to his character now and sort of understand him a bit more. And um, yeah, I like him. I mean, you know, like you, I'm, I've only met him once, but we we had a good hour with him, and he was, you know, he was he was very warm and friendly. Uh, he had a steely look in his eye. I mean, the thing, I, I only met David Unsworth once as well. Um, but the thing that that irritated people about David Unsworth is when he gave interviews. Sometimes he wasn't. He didn't seem as always being completely honest in his answers. No. No. Um, and, and that's what that's what rubbed people up the wrong way. Is he wasn't 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 saying it as it was. So yeah, no, I've he's, I've warmed to him a, a great deal. I have to say, like in certain things, you know, when we've had two long journeys this week, it's been really hard. And then you know, me, you, and John all went in those years when we had a squad of probably sixteen players, eight of which played sixty five games in the season, <laughs> like Tuesday and Thursday in a week sometimes. Um, and they, I don't remember them moaning about having to play often. Um, I, it does irritate me a little bit. The whole, you know, oh, it's been a bit hard. You're like, okay, now, <laughs> you know, I've got, I have harder weeks than you do. I reckon. I'm not moaning. Yeah. Uh, so I think that's just uh, that the times have changed a little bit, haven't it's just they? Modern day uh, footballers, yeah. But yeah. I, it, there isn't, you know, I, I get it. An, I understand that the, the seven hour coach journeys and all that sort of stuff will take it out of you. And yeah, look, so fine. We, we ground the result out. I think, I think that's great. Morris, welcome to the podcast. Hello. How, how Good are you to doing? meet you. Yeah, it's been a while. Yeah, it has, yeah, yeah. So, you're, you're here to tell us what you've been up to from an OASF point of view. Yeah. You're the new chair, aren't you? I am the new chair, yes. I've uh, taken over from uh, Jim, who's uh, decided to step down after a, a good few years now. Yeah. He's achieved a lot in difficult times. Yeah, yeah, fair play to him. I give him a, a bit of a glowing... Uh, tribute on the podcast a couple of weeks ago so I won't do it again because okay. I don't want him to get too big headed but no he's, he's a great lad and he, um, he's, 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 he's worked really hard for, for OASF and I hope that you know people realise just how much work he's put in and he's set, the, set a high bar for you now how are you getting on? Um, okay I think um, we all work together basically yeah. um, all the directors everybody mucks in really and um, I think I'm just chair by virtue of the fact that I've got a bit more spare time than the rest of them so I can do a few more things uh, the, than people that are working full time and have family, more family responsibilities have. So. Yeah, it is better suited to, to to someone who has a little bit more, for whatever reason, has a little bit more time to dedicate to yeah. it. Just in general, I think, as yeah. a, as a yeah, especially with when numbers are, are still relatively low. And, you know, yeah, it's it's difficult as well because uh, everybody has their own lives to lead, and um, you know everybody from time to time has issues with the family, some good, some bad, and um, they have to take precedence, and family takes precedence first. So yeah. um, we're all volunteers, and we do spend an incredible amount of time. Really, when when you add it all up um, of our own free time, 
working on stuff. Yeah. So before, I mean, we'll have a general, we'll have a general chat, but. What have you been up to of late? We've been working on a project um, collecting football boots, a boot bank, used ones we set off doing, and we've ended up collecting uh, 200 pairs of boots, and um, over half of those are, are, are new boots. Um, wow. We've got some some fantastic donations to be able to, to buy them and um, grants from Action Oldham and Step Outlet um, store on uh, Higginshaw Lane. They uh, donated a fantastic number of boots that they're no longer uh, selling. So as well as used boots, pre-loved ones, as they're called these days, yeah. um, we've got um, over 100 new boots to give out to uh, kids that uh, whose families can't afford a new pair of boots. Amazing. What's and, the plan for giving them away then? Well, we're, we're, we're working through it now, but we're, we're, um, we're mainly working through uh, charities uh, that um, are working with uh, children that... Um, you know, maybe can't afford a new pair of boots. Um, and um, at Madlow Youth Zone, we're working with um, some of the council services that are dealing with uh, children. Um, for instance, children that are in care. Yeah. And um, other organisations that are dealing with children. So we've, um, we've probably, we've got, um, we've donated about 75 at the moment of the 200. Brilliant. So it's just a case of uh, matching up. So yeah. if anybody um, knows of any children that need a pair of boots that really can't afford a pair, then if they get in touch with uh, bootbank at oasf.co.uk, then we'll uh, see what we can do. That's it. Well done. Yeah. So I think um, I think we'll uh, we'll we'll run it um, probably run it next uh, next summer as well. Um, uh, target in the um, September period and um, we'll be donating some to Christmas appeal so that um, some kids can have them as Christmas presents as yeah, well yeah fantastic no that's really good and, and I think it's best that you just you do the collection and then hand them over to people who are already working with people anyway that's yeah. the best and easiest way to do it, it in some ways it pre-qualifies people as well yeah. um, but rather than pe- you know if somebody just fancies a pair of boots then it's not yeah. it's not really what we're trying to uh, yeah. to achieve great stuff what else been working on our, our normal um, normal things um, in terms of uh, meeting with Darren Royal and um, raising issues such as the uh, competition that was uh, um, with the uh, Premiership under twenty one teams and, and um, also looking at uh, some of the pricing that's uh, going on for food in the grounds and trying to get some adjustments on that. Mm. I think pricing in general is um, is an issue. I think price. I mean, the, the stuff in the shop, the club shop, is expensive. Yeah. The the food and stuff around the drink, the admission prices on the day. What bothers me, I understand that that you know the club need money, and that, but what bothers me so much is what things generally don't drop in price. And if they're at their prices they are now, it's almost like well, you know, what's the? What, is there any ceiling at all? Is it how 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 far is it going to go? You know what I mean. Twenty five pounds yeah. per day for a national league game, yeah, is a lot of money. You know, forty five pound for a kid's shirt. Yeah. You know, when there's no vat on it, is a lot of money. And and you know, we're we're all at that at that point now. Where especially now that we're winning a few games, we're we're happy with how things are working out. We know it all needs funding, and it's it's getting that balance in it between. Yeah. And, you know, the owners putting all lot, and clearly they're putting loads of money in fans. I'm hoping it'll settle down a little bit if we get promoted. I'm hoping it's more expensive for us in the National League because we're having to make up a, a yeah. deficit, if you like. Uh, when you look at some of the um, some of the investment that goes into getting out of the um, National League, it's, it, it really is it, it, expensive. Yeah. And, um, it, um, and it just goes on and on up the pyramid. But it, in terms of the prices of food and whatever, it's... It's, it's about the quality as well. And so at the moment, some of the quality is lacking. And I know the club are working on a, new, a contract with a new new caterer, which should help enhance that. Mm. But at the moment, um, for the last month or two, it's been pretty dire. Mm. Um, so um, we're trying to, trying to get a hand, handle on that as well. And um, how's that going? Are they, are they finding the club responsive to...? They have responded to some of, the, some of our... Um, um, concerns, yeah, but it, it, it's an ongoing issue. It seems in every match there's a, there's some sort of um, uh, complaint about the quality. So um, I think it's mixed. In fairness, I mean there, there is uh, there, there are some things that are coming into the stadium that people are quite happy about. Those filthy fries yeah. seem to have gone down quite well. But then just in the ground, I'm mean, like four pound for a portion of chips and 
things like that. You know, four pound thirty for a pie now in the Rochdale Road and yeah. stuff like that. It's you know, where does it end? You know yeah. what I mean? It's it's, it's it's over eight pounds for pie and chips is, is steep, especially when is. The, when the quality sometimes is lacking. Yeah. So these are these are things. But I mean, I, I, you know, last week's podcast or this week's podcast, whatever, is very upbeat. It's very positive about the you know the, the way things are going on the pitch and the results and everything else. It's again, I know ASF's role now that we're not in battle mode as we were before is I think trying to keep the, the trying to push for the balance in those things isn't it so yeah. that the fans are, are not being exploited for making up the shortfall you know you, you, you can't be exploiting loyalty uh, at fun, uh, fundamentally that's the issue across the whole game and I'm not just I'm not talking about latics I'm not picking on latics it's it's an issue across the whole of the game, isn't it? Is that the, yeah, the is, yeah. fans are exploited for their loyalty? Yeah, it's not it's not unique to Latix, but it's not just um, there's not just an open wallet there in the fans' pockets. No, in the, the same way that there isn't in the owners' pockets. Exactly. Um, so we've we've got we've got to um, we've got to understand that the owners are, um, are helping sort of yeah, well in, in a massive way really to turn the club around, but that doesn't mean that everything. Um, it, that that uh, sort of go, goes on is 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 good. They're, they're always gremlins, um, and we all know that um, football ownership changes. It's a very difficult industry to be in. Uh, there are massive challenges, and um, you know, three times in the last what thirty five years, we, we've had real problems with uh, the ownership and the way the club has been run. Mm. So that's not to say that you know we we've got to maintain that legacy, haven't we, and make sure that. Um, for the fans of the future, that there's a club there that's well run and um, is is successful on and off the pitch. Yeah, and I think that's what the Rothwell family are genuinely trying to achieve. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. And I think it's just trying to make sure that that fans have a serious voice at the table or in that discussion, which probably brings us on to something else that you've been working on lately, which is the survey. Yeah, but- about the director on the board. Yeah, I've done a um, done a survey, uh, uh, and we're just looking at the results of that at the moment. And um, that that's not an easy one, really, uh, because um, uh, we do we do have a share in the club, um, but the history tells us that the director on the board um, ends up being sort of ostracised from the OSF board due to uh, confidentiality constraints, and gets put in a very difficult situation. And um, on occasions, then in the past, that's that's gone different ways. Some people have then got very too too close to the club, and, um, and ended up working for the club. I mean, I think in, on balance, I'm thinking about that. Uh, being the the trust representative on the board in the past has been such a thankless task and so difficult to actually achieve anything f- on behalf of the trust. Th- those people probably felt that they were able to do more for Oldham Athletic by being on by going and doing something for the club directly than. Staying within the staying at OASF because I think, I mean, you and I, we've as I spoke about it uh, as I with all of the previous board, there was felt very strongly. I felt very strongly personally about not putting somebody back into that situation because they lose all effectiveness to OASF. And yeah. I can understand now, really, having thought about it, why they might feel that they're better off going and doing something directly for the football club because they've got more freedom to or less restrictions. It's a really Difficult, unenviable situa- position to be in as it has stood, yeah. um, and and I, I would personally want to see some significant changes to to the relationship, to the role, to the responsibilities, and all that. Like you know, the stuff that you guys have been talking about before anyone took it on board. Yeah, and and um, if you are a, a fan on the board, it's it's difficult to I think to impact the actual running of um, Oldham Athletic. You know, it's a private company at the end of the day, and the Rothwell families have the final say. And um, you, you can't just be a, um, you know, there's a, a thing called a non-executive director. Well, it's not really a proper legal term. You're either a director or you're not a director. Mm. And you, therefore, end up with all the responsibility of every other director. That you, You're the same in, in the eyes of the law. So if things go wrong, you're, the, you're as much in the firing line as them. Mm. Um, so it's just v- very difficult to go there and maybe not be privy to everything that goes on in the club and still be a director and have all the responsibilities. So we're trying to work our way through that. And um, some of the um, legislation that's coming out um, f- from the from the government and putting a sort of laws around the game and the way it's operated, um, 
does have some uh, impact really on fans, representatives on boards, and there may be a, a route through taken into some of their recommendations. It kind of falls into that grey area, doesn't it, of legally it's a private business owned by a particular group or a particular family or whatever. But it's not it's not just another it's not just another private business, is it? And it's not you know, think about how much we've all invested over the years of our time and our energy and our money into Oldham Athletic, you know, and, and every other football fan across the country. You know, it all it all adds up. And so it's that that case of all right, yeah, the the, the legal ownership can pass from one to another, but it, it's not it's not the way it works in football. And people say who are the people who say they're a custodian of the club. Well, I'd like to see more of them actually putting measures in place privately to, to to live up to that and say, right, okay, well, we actually want the fans to be more on board in the future. We want them to have more of a say, be more proactive. One of the reasons why I stepped away from the role in the trust is so that I could go back into the middle and over time, I'd, you know, report more sort of independently on, well, I, do we think the club are doing enough to, to reach out and bridge that gap between the club and the trust, are the trust, sorry, the foundation doing enough, you know, and, and have those conversations in a in a public and, and sensible way that might help to take them forward rather than everything be behind, you know, the curtain, so to speak, which is obviously we've been there before and we've done that. So that's why I wanted to do that. How, how do you think the progress is going? Is it is it, you know, since the survey, since these conversations have had, are the club receptive to to the feedback you're given or have you not got that far yet? We've not we've not got that far yet on the uh, on the on the directors uh, front. Um we we've done a, a few surveys, like we've done the survey on away travel, which um we um, we put the findings of that and discussed them with the board, but um, I think there's still a way to go on away travellers um, affects uh, supporters. Um, you know, there wasn't an official coach went to Sutton on on Saturday, and we really need to get back to that. Yeah. And um, you know, the Ruffy Heads have have done a f- fantastic job in their away travel, um, and um, but we've got a long way to go on that. Like, you know, you've got fans like Brad and Ben Man putting coaches on, OESF doing things like the survey. It's got to be a team effort. And if, if, if you know, it's a community club and all that, inverted commas, there has to be that sense of community of doing things together. And I think that, that the staff at Latix are stretched because they're not a massive team compared to a lot of other football clubs. It, you know, people are spinning multiple plates and all that until we totally get that. But there are some people out there amongst the fan base that would be prepared to help out with with certain things and it'd be nice to see a bit more a bit more of that and uh, you know so that the, the, the team people will put the time into Latix and to OSF for nothing because they because they care and because they want to so I think making more of that would be a good step forward yeah one of the debates that we have is um, is around volunteering and um, not everybody wants to be on the board of OSF it's not everybody's cup of tea mm-hmm. so um, but there are quite a few things that we can get people involved in. We get a lot of help on the kiosk and um, distributing membership packs uh, from volunteers. We get um, we've had some help on on boot banking, cleaning some of the the pre loved ones that that came in, and also uh, some great help on on the on the surveys, um, particularly the away travel one. Mm. So um, people are prepared to dip in and dip out. And we need to build that community more and, and get more help. Uh, you know, the six of us, we can't do everything. Um, and that limits the scope of what we can do. So we do need people to volunteer. And uh, and um, it may be just a case of dipping in and dipping out on a particular project that interests you. Mm. Um, and it might not be too time consuming. So, um, so yeah, we need to, we need to build that um, community of fans and um, helpers. Um, which I think was was great when the the Legends football match was on. There was a, a really big big push, but the, there again at that time, uh, you know, we, we were in the days of the Abdullah ownership, and um, there was a, a driving force behind doing that match and um, trying to change the ownership. Yeah, um, and that, that's one of the things that's more difficult with the OSF at the moment is that the, the, it's not um, there's not that um, that cause. Um, everybody's relatively happy with the way the ownership runs. 
and um, therefore there's not that drive urgency and, and urgency yeah to um, to actually um, do something so, yeah uh, and that that transmits um, I suppose a bit to membership as well our membership needs needs to grow the more members we have the more voice we have we did convert uh, from being a company limited by guarantee to being a community benefit society um, it helped to reduce the tax that we have to pay on any uh, money that we make and um, it also opened up a few more avenues of grants that we could get which we couldn't otherwise have got yeah as a, a company limited by guarantee and um, i guess that having more members to that will would probably be seen as a, as a plus if you were looking for funding for things as well wouldn't it i mean that's another thing you know because the funding is is to is to you know, to, to deliver for the members. So the more members you've got, the more likely funders are going to say, oh, well, you know, rather than just it being a few hundred, if it was a few thousand. And yeah, uh, yeah. And, and the more members we've got, the more we can do things like boot bank um, and things in the community and, and put the fans and the club more in the community than may be the case now. Um, and memberships, are, I mean, we, we have to... We have to charge, um, being a community benefit society, everybody gets one share in, in OASF. So, it's, it, I mean, we're the, we're the directors, but we've we got to be guided by the membership. So everybody has the same, same uh, say. And uh, we set the membership at £12, which covers our, our running costs and any extra goes into our uh, contingency fund, um, mm. which really is um, rainy day money. But if, if we had a bigger membership, we could do a lot more and um, give a lot more back um, to the fans in terms of building our community. And, and you know, we've got three objectives, really, to invest in the club, um, invest in the fans, and invest in the wider Oldham community. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're trying to do with things like Boot Bank and um, Latix Lift. You know, if they're not running coaches, then we're trying to put people together to... Um, give one another lifts. We now run that on the Facebook page, so there's a Latix Lift Facebook page. So if anybody's looking for a lift somewhere uh, to an away match, um, then um, you can you can post on there. When we invited John onto the podcast, it's a few weeks ago now, John, if you remember, you tweeted actually about... Um, there was chat about Conlon and Lundstrom being poor in a game, and I, and I want to relate it to this because I talk about Conlon, uh, and and you were you were saying you get frustrated with our fan base sometimes, you know, getting on getting on the boo boys, and you want you want to defend the boo boys um, because our fan base get on their backs. I mean, I, I, it feels to me like we're more in it together now than ever. There appears to be. I've only been to a couple of games this season. Um, and, you know, I guess we've won both those games, but oh, sorry, three games a season and we drew one of them. Um, but there's no, there's no, no one's getting on the players' backs on the terraces in the games I've been. Everyone's in it together um, and supporting the team. And that feels like a step change. I don't know what your views are, John, about, you know, uh, the, the boo boys. Maybe you want to elaborate on that a little bit. Uh, yeah, so so going back to that tweet, I do agree with you. I do feel like I feel like there's less to get on players' backs about though as well this season. I think the players are, are giving a much better account of themselves, and people can see that you know they, they, they're putting in 110 percent this year. They're doing the basic things well. They're working for each other. I think they're doing themselves a favour. Uh, the fans are a lot more together, uh, but there's not any of those regular dour performances from anybody this season. I don't think. Um, Going back to that tweet, I just meant like Lundstrom has absolutely changed my mind, by the way, since that tweet. Um, he's been fantastic. Conlon, I still, this is my personal opinion. I just don't see what he brings to, to the team, to be honest with you. Um, but again, that's my, my personal opinion. Some, some people see stuff in Tom Conlon that I just don't. Um, and that's football, I suppose. He, he blows he blows hot and cold, doesn't he? This 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 is I, I have this sort of like you know love hate relationship with Tom Conlon as well. Like he, in in the week at Maidenhead, he was uh, for me he was at fault or certainly contributed to to one of Maidenhead's goals by being an absolute pansy in the middle and not getting stuck in when he should have done. Um, and he and he, he there are times when he he just goes missing or and you want him. He's the captain, remember? Like that's the other thing. He's the club captain, so you want him to. Grab the scruff, grab the game by the scruff of the neck, and drag people along. And I don't think he does that enough for the captain. Um, but obviously, 
you know, his attitude and his it, it must be great because Mickey picks him every week. So he, he must be he, he must be good to have around a dressing room and he, he must be trying to set some standards. But I just I just want a bit more from him. You know, I just I want him I want a bit more consistency from Tom Conlon. Um and I think that might might help us. I don't know where it feels like it might be there. I'm not saying he, he isn't good enough. I'm just I'm just sometimes he's just missing in games and I want a bit more from him. Um but yeah I maybe that Kai did Kai Payne play well yesterday? Um, you know, did he contribute? Is, is that is that helping Tom Conlon's game? I don't know how Conlon played yesterday because I didn't watch it. Yeah, I thought he did all right. Kai, Kai Payne, John, did you? Yeah, I, I believe Kai Payne, you'll see, he, he did well, but I think you'll see a much, much more of a player from Kai Payne when he's not doing his job and Tom Conlon's job. So yesterday, mm. Kai Payne, and he was yesterday, you could see it, Kai Payne's all over the pitch and, he, and he's he's doing the job of Tug. Um, and going back to that, that tweet you mentioned, this this is what I'm talking about. So Conlon's had a free pass pretty much since he signed. If Nathan Sheeran's putting in the performances Tom Conlon's put in this season, he's the devil. And that's what I meant about the certain players that, that get the stick and certain players that get plenty of leeway. And I just just don't understand it. I don't see any difference in Tom Conlon and Nathan Sheeran apart from Sheeran scored a few goals. Mm. Sheeran definitely scored, mate. You know, he, he he made more impact. Well, I mean, Conlon when he's on his game and his delivery is good and things like that. You know, he's he like you said the other day, Andy. He, he featured a lot on the Sutton highlights reel because he was he was put you know playing a lot of important balls. But yeah, he's 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 not the he's not the finished article, Tom Conlon. And when you you know, in his in his performances for Latics, and when you look at his experience and his age, that's what you expect him to be. You know, he's at that point in his career now. What is he? Twenty seven or something like that. Hmm. I think. But you know, he's, he, yeah. you're not looking. When you're looking at Kai Payne. I don't know that he, Kai Payne's probably going to go on and play at a higher level because he's only nineteen. He's got a football intelligence about him and a, and a physicality about him uh, that 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 means he's probably going to excel uh, to a higher level, but. I think you're right. I think Conlon and him in that holding role, it was it was Payne doing most of the mopping up and and, and all that kind of thing. And and, and Conlon sort of looked, almost looks a little bit like he didn't know where to be sometimes because you know you got the Lundstrom further forward and yeah, I don't know, not not he's, not he's, convinced. Go he's on. 28. He's 28. He'll be 29 in February. Uh, so yeah. yeah, he should be. This should be his peak, shouldn't it? He should be right yeah. at his peak yeah. now. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's got he's 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 he's. he's but again, like. I, I'm I'm reluctant to jump on any on any players back. First of all, because I don't think it does any good whatsoever for for the club, and we all want the club to move forward. And secondly, like you said about Lundstrom, John, players do grow into a season. They do, you know, they they have different spells, and 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 they need to find their position and stuff like that. So there was a funny moment related to Kaepernick in the Rochdale Road, and where he, I think he had an opportunity to shoot and. Uh, and this, <laughs> they just this this is it was quite quiet in the Rochdale Road end at the time, and this cry of "Just shoot you, dickhead!" rang out, and uh, that was quite funny. <laughs> but, uh, it wasn't quite getting on the players' back, but it was uh, it was just one of those kind <laughs> of frustrated <laughs> shouts from the Rochdale. So it was something like that, anyway. But um, yeah, look, we've we, I think midfield is still is still that we, we're good at the back, despite having those brain fart moments that have led us to concede like you said Andy those seven goals in those two games but on the whole the, the performances at the back are very good we had the conversation with James on the phone in who's one of those fans who has been criticising Hudson for some reason I don't get that I think he's been the most reliable keeper we've had for ages um, and I'm more than happy with Hudson uh, but um what was the point I was going to make? Well, on on Hudson, like the the the, the criticism of Hudson is oh, that yeah. the, the, he let he lets a go- If you if you look at the goals we can see, there are times when you when you look at him and think he could have gone for that or he could have got closer to it. But I think you're nitpicking. Like it generally, he comes out and collects the ball. Generally, he, he commands his box. Yeah, generally, I mean, look at he has look a at some of the other. Look at some of the other goalkeeping performances. Yesterday, their goalkeeper, a couple of absolute howler moments. Um, the game before that, the Solio game, I think their keeper was looking particularly dodgy. The Sutton goalkeeper threw one into his own goal. Like, you know, this level, you're not going to get the best of the best in terms of the goalkeepers. So 
I'm happy with Hudson's performance overall. I think he's been solid. If you think that the defence overall is, is pretty solid, then he forms a big part of that as the goalkeeper. So you're looking at the the, the squad, you know, the wide that we've got width now down in the middle at the back was solid with the three centre halves. We've got width. We've got we've got goals he might fond up, but we know that we're still one or two permanent players short up front. And then that midfield, that midfield, you know, we've again you look at someone like Kai Payne, he's on a short term loan, so he's not necessarily the answer. You've got Lundstrom in there. But then Charlie's not fit. Hammond sort of is in and out. There's still sort of like we seem to have a lot of midfielders, but would you be confident in naming what your best midfield was? No, I don't uh, think you can, can you? You, you, you can't, yeah. He, he's got, Tom Conlon's the fixture because he's the captain and then everyone rotates around him. And yeah, I, I don't know. Yeah, it, it's, it's tricky. But I think I th- we're going to, you know, we're going to sign some more players, aren't we? Uh, that, they're, that, you know, if Norwood goes especially, they'll, they'll look to sign players. Josh Stones or to talk about another centre-half coming in. Um, I think Hobson might not be that far away now. So it's, it's going to have and flow and change. Um I, I do think just to go back to the Norwood bit again. I do, I do wonder whether he'll. It, it, if you go to Tranmere at the weekend, right? If you Mickey Mellon, right? If you Mickey Mellon, you're not been happy with his attitude for a few weeks. He's not putting it in. He's swanning around like you know, big time Charlie, and he wants to get a reaction out of him. And he thinks calculatedly. I don't think he's going to put it in how I want him to do against Dagenham and Redbridge at home. I'm going to go with Drummond and Fonda. I'm going to leave him out of the squad entirely, get him really annoyed, and then just yeah. chuck him in at Tranmere and watch him go. <laughs> like there could Maybe. be, there could be, yeah. you know, it, it, there could be like, you know, the psychological little tactic man management things that he's doing with them. And that's what I want him to do. I, yeah. You know, I want him to wind James Norwood up to the point where he's absolutely furious and he's running around like, like you no, know, you think you could say to him, but. Give me 60 minutes. I'll bring someone else on. You don't have to play the 90. What, I want 60 minutes of full-on effort from you and then I'll pull you up, pull you up to take you off. You know, you can get fitter because he's because that pre-season has definitely held him back a little bit for me. Um, yeah, that, that's that, that's what you want him to do. But it's all, it's it's all, all I mean, it's, it's, it's all set up for a hat-trick on Saturday at Tranmere uh, with a comfortable 3-0 away win for the Latics. James Norwood hat-trick. <laughs> it would be great, wouldn't it? I'm coming up for it. I mean, me and the lad are oh, jumping, yeah. on a, jumping on a train from Houston. Yeah, I'm bringing my oh, eldest. Fantastic. So it'd be, let me know. Be great. Are you, do you have to change? Where to, uh, what's the? No, I'm going the straight route? through to straight through to Lime Street. Yeah. Right. Well, let us know. I'll meet you at Lime Street then because I'm right. Yeah. So as well. So that sounds yeah. like a plan. Wicked. Yeah. Are you going, John? I'm not. Unfortunately, I've got to work on that Saturday. So yeah, I'm going oh. to work. It, it looked like up, like up till about yesterday, we'd sold about 1,500 tickets to season ticket orders in two days. So we're definitely going to sell out. It's definitely going to be a packed yeah. sold out away end. So, yeah, I know a few people that are like, yeah, no, I can't. I've got this commitment. I'm going to my brother. It's like he's going away. And there's like, oh, I'm gutted because it's going to be a... Uh... Well, see, the, the way I look, it's a bit of a free hit, isn't it, right? Because oh, yeah. uh, if we if we get beat, we're getting beat by a team in a league above us. Right, it's not the end of the world. Uh, the, the the F, you know, the, you want you want to have an FA Cup run for the reasons you described. You could do with getting a plum tie in the third round so we can get some money into the clubs. So that's what you're aiming for. But it's a bit of a free hit if we get beat, we get beat. Um, but I feel like they they got beat yesterday, Tranmere. Um, they got a bit of thumping somewhere three one, I think. Um, so there's there's a very good chance we that we can compete with them because the top end of our league and the bottom end of that league are very very similar in quality I think and yeah. um yeah it could be it could be a fun day out hopefully and like you said Andy we're the we're the form team aren't we you know we we're, we're we're on a great run of 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 form and and results and the the lads will be full of confidence and you know the I'm just trying to think the, the lads that are in the team now i.e. all the new signings and that. I don't think they've not experienced a proper away end from Latics fans, have they? Like like this is going to be. You know, we we went to... With this season, we've not had a big away game. We've not... You know, something like we have Rochdale or this, where like Chesterfield was in the last couple of seasons, where the away end's packed. It's a Saturday. Everyone's had a few beers. It's raucous. It's loud. It's continuous. I don't think that the the, the new <clears throat> some of the, you know the your Manny's and your Regan Ogles and all that have, have experienced uh, 
that away end, yeah. And I think that'll be. I think Saturday will be that day. And and I think that with the way that the, the, the that you know, like you mentioned before about the togetherness and the you know the way that they're playing for each other and for the and for the for the fans and that, I think it, it that could you know could carry us through and we could we could we could definitely beat Tranmere on uh, at their place on on Saturday despite us being in the division below the the stars are aligned for us to to go there and beat them obviously I'm having said all this now we'll we'll lose 2-0 or something like that and I'll come on with our tail between our legs but it's 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 set up for a for a for a for a great day on Saturday Sorry, John, I'm rubbing it in here because you can't go. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, boy. I, I, I honestly hope I missed the best day of the season. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's hot to merch. Sexy merch. It's hot to merch. It's sexy, sexy, sexy merch. Visit weareoldham.co.uk forward slash shop now to see our brand new range of hot, hot, sexy merch. It's hot new merch. Sexy merch. It's hot new merch. It's sexy, sexy, sexy merch. Yeah. Well, spe- speaking of uh, speaking of um, putting John uh, under the heat a bit, should we put him through his latex mine paces? Oh, yes. Absolutely. I'm just having a look down at the questions here, John. Uh, there's a couple of tricky ones, but there are some older questions in there. And uh, you've got the age on your side, I feel. I've got the age, but not the memory. So we'll see how we go. <laughs> <laughs> man, good luck, mate. Here we go. <laughs> What year did Latix last reach the fourth round of the League Cup? Two thousand and sixteen. Two thousand and two. <laughs> uh, between yeah. oh, no, between January nineteen eighty eight and May nineteen ninety three, a five year period. How many times did Latix score four goals or more in a game? I'll accept an answer five either side of the number. Go for 12. 29 times. Believe it. Give over. I know. Uh, which keeper did Latics agree to sign on loan from Middlesbrough before Ronnie Moore changed his mind and signed Chris Day instead? No idea. That's a pass. Come back to it. Debut goal scorers. Which striker scored on his debut as a substitute versus Wimbledon in April 1993? Let's see, we're talking. I've, again, I've, I've absolutely no idea. Premier League era. Um, Ian Olney. Darren Beckford. Where did Simon Blitz announce? He originally wanted to build a new stadium in 2005. Uh, Failsworth. Fernie Field Farm. That wasn't Failsworth, was it? Which, uh, that was the overspace place, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. How yeah. old was David Ayres when he made his last Latix appearance in May 2006? Was he, was he from a daft like 47 or something ridiculous? 42. 42. Yeah, 42. Yeah, you said that. This was about to do it. I started the next one, so I'll finish. Which Barbadian international striker did Latic sign on loan at the start of 2009 10? Oh, I've got this one. What you haven't, though? Go on. Nick, Bla- Nick Blackman. Nick right, Blackman. We have- Blackburn. Yeah, we had we had one pass in there. Uh, which goalkeeper uh, did Latix agree to sign on over Middlesbrough before Ronnie Moore changed his mind and signed Chris Day? Any idea, Matt? I've still no idea. 
No, we, the way that the question's phrased, it sounds like it might be like he might have gone on to become quite well known or something. But I'm, I'm <laughs> well, he was better. He was better than Chris Day. That's the reason. <laughs> yeah. but uh, I, can't, I can't remember any Middlesbrough goalkeepers off the top of my head. So it was Ross Turnbull. All right. So are we giving oh, him man. one there for the forty-two. Oh, it's contentious. I've, I've kept I'll never get any right when anybody else doesn't either, so I won't expect him. <laughs> I think, I think when I think when the option is to, is it will he have none or will he have one? It, it, you, you might as well be favourable and give him the one as opposed to you know it, it's not going to cause any trouble at the top end of the table. No, unfortunately, is it? They, they, so, I, I feel they were a, a tough set of questions. They were tough. Yeah, yeah, yeah they came yeah. out. I mean, if it, if it, to be cool. honest, John, I got none as well. So uh, it's yeah, uh, but we, you know, but we. Be, being comparable on a score with me is is certainly enough to be proud about. That's uh, I'm rubbish at this. Uh, I went I, mean, I went with I went with Ian Olney and all in my head, but uh, yeah, I, I think that the, the problem is you try and black out most of your um, <laughs> time watching Latics, don't you? And then when you have to remember some of it, you can't remember anything. No, no. No, I, it's do, not I, do, I, I do. I do remember that Betford goal, though. Do you remember it? He slid in with the goalkeeper and then whipped it from underhand, Sega's his legs, and then tapped it in. Yeah, I do remember it. I do remember it. I obviously didn't remember what the date was, but yeah, I remember the goal. Anyway, the thing is, never mind you being a, a threat at the top end of the table, John. What's important is Latics are a threat at the top end of the table. That's all that matters. Just five points between Oldham, Gateshead. Barnet, Forest Green, and York. So it's really at the top of the table. So it really is heating up. Rochdale. That was we've got three point cushion on them now. I, they seem to they seem like they might be there or thereabouts. So the, the kind of the top seven, I think, is just starting to sort of show itself as 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 you know, Yorville are, are, are pushing up. The Solly all are starting to creep up the table. Um, but I think I think that the top seven or eight now. Is probably looking like what it's may, what what it might be. The top, I'd say, the top five are already in the top six. I'd I'd, 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 I'd put it that way, um, and I think we I think we're one of them. I think looking at the goal difference, I mean, York's goal difference is very impressive. They've got nineteen, Forest Green sixteen, Barnet fourteen, and then there's a drop down. Gates said nine, and us eight. And like you said, Andy, we've conceded seventeen, which is pretty high. Uh, but Barnet have conceded twenty. I mean, it, it, Barnet's incredible, really. They've they've won eleven, lost five, uh, and drawn none. Um, you know, they've scored thirty four goals, which is a lot, but they've conceded twenty. So it is it's it's fascinating when you look at it, really. Um, but yeah, that, that hopefully that early glut of draws that we got was was it was our our worst run, really, and we and we don't go on a, a run like that again. Yeah, um, and you look at it now, we're a third the way through the season already. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, like you're saying, it's starting to starting to be set now, isn't it? The, the, the teams that, that will compete at whatever end of the table they'll be at. So, yeah, this yeah. is um, it's going to be a fun month, November. Um, and let's see where we are at the end of that. Yeah. Are you going Rochdale, John? I'll be going Rochdale, 100%. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Work can yeah. burn down for that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's going to be good. Are you go- you'll be going to Barnet ne- uh, not next week, week after Andy, I guess. No, irritatingly, um, I, me and the wife are out that evening, and so when they move the kick off from three to five thirty, it, uh, it, it knackered yeah. me up. So I can't, I can't now make Barnet, but I am also um, tying with Rochdale. Uh, it's going to mean a ridiculously early train from Euston because it's kick off at twelve thirty. But I'm, I'm <laughs> thinking of, uh, I'm thinking of jumping on the train and coming up for that. Oh yeah, you definitely should because. There's not many. Well, I mean, said that like you you said before about the York game, and you know, I think as uh, as you there, well, there's no games like Rochdale anyway because of the it's just it is unique. Um, but there 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 promises to be some good away days ahead as we as we as we get towards the end of the season, and we're I'd love. I mean, I, if we finish in the playoffs, we finish in the playoffs. I'd love it to go down towards the like the last few games of the season for who can go up automatically. Well, I mean, I, having said that, ideally, I'd like us to be free and clear at the top <laughs> um, with, with a few games to go, but I can't see that happening. I, I think it probably will go down to the wire this season, unlike um, last season. But, yeah, it's, it's it's all gearing up to have a, a, an exciting end to the season for all the right reasons. 
Um, so let's hope that it continues. But like you said, there's only a third of the season gone. There's a lot of things that can go wrong between now and the end of the season. Not- <laughs> said, said like a true Latics fan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Not just for Latics, but for for other teams as well. So yeah, who knows what's ahead? But November is um is 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 setting us up to be a key month because then going into December, traditionally we don't have a great Christmas period. Um, you've mentioned the fact that we've got York on um, Boxing Day. We've got Hartlepool on New Year's Day. So, that you know, tough, tough games. But, yeah, it's reasons to be cheerful. Oh, there's two there's two nasty trips as well. 30th of November down to Eastleigh and 21st Braintree just before. Yeah, only, the, only the hardest of the hardcore and... Uh, We'll be making that trip down to Braintree four days before Christmas, I should imagine, from Oldham anyway. Hopefully the Oasis lot will do us proud on that day. Oh, yeah. I'll be there for that one, yeah. Yeah, Christmas Oasis. Would that be the Oasis Christmas Do? Official Oasis Christmas Do? Yeah, it will be, yeah. Which, which consists of uh, nothing mere, nothing more than uh, crisps and copious amounts of ale, really. <laughs> it's like, yeah, I mean, it's like, the, oh, yeah, the Christmas Day, yeah, we all meet up and drink loads of pints, well, yeah, like we do every other game, so <laughs> every, every, every trip's a Christmas trip, isn't it, really? So, um, yeah, but, yeah, brilliant. I mean, again, we, you know, take it back to yesterday, we ground that a 1-0 win at home to Dagenham and Redbridge, We've taken seven points. So yeah, seven points from the last three games. Absolutely fantastic. I'm I'm buzzing. Can't can't. There's there's no reasons to be storming off and going eating at Nando's on my own. I've got no absolutely no reason to do it. I'm I'm fine. If you want, you, know, you two are more than welcome to. I, I've never been to Nando's, but if I was to go now, you'd, you'd be welcome to join me. I, I don't want to sit there and eat on my own. So I'm happy enough. Thanks for joining us, John. You're welcome. Thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. A pleasure. No thanks Cheers very John. much. Andy, thanks as always, mate. All right, mate. Uh, we'll see everybody for the phone in on Wednesday in the build up to Tramir. Hey, Dave, did you know that listeners can now buy us a coffee or any other kind of hot beverage? Ooh. And what's your favourite hot beverage, Dave? A macchiato. And how do you like your macchiato? Black with lots of milk. Oh. No cream? No. <laughs> Well, if you want to buy Dave uh, Macchiato, then go to buymeacoffee.com forward slash we are oldham. I'll just have a Nescaf. Ooh. Thank you, listeners. 